Thank you for clicking on this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to more videos like this one on the iPad and digital note taking and planning. So jumping right in, there are obvious differences between the layouts of GoodNotes and Notability as soon as you enter the app. GoodNotes has more of a folder and thumbnail view to the files. It reminds me of the folder look on MacBooks. You can also organize the files by date, name, or type, again, similar to the setup on the computers, but you can also switch to list view, which is very similar to the setup in Notability, so you can really customize how you want to view your notes and files within the GoodNotes app. In Notability, there's not really a way to customize the view of how you want things organized. You can drag down on these subject and divider sections to organize by name, modified date, or created date. But much of the view customizability is with GoodNotes as far as the layout. To start a new folder or notebook in GoodNotes, you can click the plus icon. Here you can create a notebook, a folder, or import images and files, scan documents, or do a quick note. In Notability, you can create subjects and dividers using the plus icon in the top left hand corner. A divider creates kind of the toggle menu and the subject creates kind of like a little folder or a subsection within that menu. To actually create a note, you will click the pencil icon in the top right hand corner. To import anything into the app, you'll click this down arrow to pull from other sources. So creating a notebook in GoodNotes will be the main way you'll go about taking handwritten notes. There is so much customization in GoodNotes. You can change the cover as well as select the type of paper, the color of the paper, the size of the paper. This makes it a super handy app if you later want to print your notes or documents because you know you are getting the appropriate sizes. You can also import your own paper templates to choose from. In Notability, once you select the new note, a note paper will automatically be generated for you. To change the page type, you'll click the three dots in the right hand corner. And as you can see, there are far less page types and colors, and there really isn't a way to figure out the page size, which might make it difficult for getting a better print if needed. A lot of the page designs are also very quirky, which is cool, but might not be super great for note taking. In Notability, you can change the page view from seamless, so one long scroll or a single page for easy swipe, and you can do the same thing in GoodNotes 5. As you can see from the Notability menu, there are far less options that you can use to aid your note taking. I mean, there's virtually nothing, just selecting from minimal page types, changing the scrolling, and then if you need or want help or info about the document. In GoodNotes, you have copy and rotate page options. GoodNotes also has an outline feature unlike Notability, which can prove to be really useful for organization. You can also change the page template here, jump to pages from this menu, clear the entire page, settings specifically for the Apple Pencil and the document, and a flashcards feature where you can write on flashcards but study them in a digital format. To view the pages within your notes, you'll click the squares here on Notability, and from here you can see all the pages as well as add pages, cut, copy, clear, or delete pages. You can also search your notes here. In GoodNotes, you'll click the squares in this corner and you can view your pages in the thumbnail view. Here are a ton of functions that you can use from this view. There's also a favorites view where you can see pages that you bookmarked and then the outline feature if you created an outline for your notes. So a lot more functions and ways of viewing and organizing your notes just from the few menus that we've looked at for GoodNotes 5. All right, so actually taking notes, as you can see, the GoodNotes toolbar is a little bit more immersive than Notability. You have a lot of tools here to work from and easy access to your favorite pen colors and sizes. You can also customize the pen tool more in GoodNotes to get it to the exact writing style that you prefer, and they have sliders for the pen size. In Notability, there isn't as much customization and you're kind of locked into specific sizes. With both apps, you can customize the colors and you can mark preferences for the tool in Notability as well. And it's the exact same way with the highlighter in Notability. In GoodNotes, like the pen tool, the highlighter has a slider for the size, and you can also toggle on and off whether you want it to auto-perfect to straight lines when you highlight your notes. Like the other tools in Notability, you're locked into specific sizes for the eraser, unlike in GoodNotes, and you can choose between whole or partial eraser strokes. However, in GoodNotes, you can choose the entire stroke or not, erase only the highlight or not, and all kinds of extra features. In GoodNotes, you can select the shape tool and it will auto-perfect shapes that you draw. You can also select or deselect the fill option for those shapes. Alternatively, you can use the pen tool to draw and hold for shape perfection. And in Notability, you'll just draw and hold. 
They have fill options as well, but more customization than GoodNotes. So after drawing a shape, you can actually select it and style and change the stroke and fill colors and notability. Both apps have the text tool. I prefer how the text tool works in Notability over GoodNotes. I think the text tool in GoodNotes is a little finicky, but each have their own customization options for text if you were to type your notes in either of these apps. In Notability, the scissors here act more like a lasso for you to be able to move things around and edit them how you want. In GoodNotes, it's just a lasso tool and you can actually customize what you pick up. In GoodNotes, you can add photos to your notes and you can do this in Notability as well. Notability also has built-in stickies and GIFs if you want those added features in your notes. In Notability, you can also voice record while you take your notes, which might be handy. I personally tried out voice recording when I had in-person classes and didn't find it very useful as a chemistry major. And you honestly might hear more of you tapping and writing on the screen than the actual lecture itself, especially if your lecturer is more than a few feet away. But the voice recording is paired with your notes. This feature isn't available for GoodNotes, but you might want to opt for a better voice recorder anyway if you want to use that for your lectures. Apps like OtterEye actually create a transcript, which might be more helpful for you if you end up going with GoodNotes. One of the last features I want to touch on is exporting and sharing your notes. As you can see, this is the menu you'll get with Notability. Over in GoodNotes, they have live collaboration, so you can be taking notes with someone on the same document at the same time, which Notability doesn't have and they have similar export options between the two apps. And one other feature that GoodNotes has that Notability doesn't currently have is for those who might want to present their notes or documents. They have a laser pointer tool and the ability to mirror their notes for presentations. Before closing the video, I wanted to touch on a few more points specifically for those who use hyperlinked files like digital planners or textbooks. GoodNotes is certainly a more friendly application for that. They have a reading mode, which makes it really easy to jump between links. In Notability, you'll use this pointer tool. And I found that Notability is a bit more finicky with files like these. They also have this page button here that you cannot disable or move. So something like this can get in the way of links or if your professors are anything like mine and they use the full real estate of the PowerPoint slide, it might actually get cut off since they place this on top of notes and landscape orientation. Both apps, however, are available on the MacBook, so you can get it on your MacBook as well. The iPad app for Notability is currently $8.99 USD, and GoodNotes is currently $7.99 USD. And the last point you may want to consider is how supportive and active their teams are. GoodNotes comes out with updates very often, and much of the updates are adding new features, which is somewhat unlike Notability. I've found that the GoodNotes support team is also more responsive to issues in my experience compared to Notability, which may or may not matter much to you at all. And obviously this may differ from person to person and issue to issue. Both great apps, great teams behind their development, and both have something that sets the other apart. Hopefully this video provided some value to you in determining which app will work best for you and your note taking style. I recommend going with the app that you think will elevate your workflow. I'm interested in which app you're going with and why down in the comments, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye!